I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and uh, this is the very first part of my series Better VBA and uh, with that I would like to show you how to write better and easier VBA code. Um, today's first part of the series is about the settings of the VBA development environment and there are a few tiny settings you, you should absolutely know and uh, tweak to your likings because otherwise your life uh, beginning with VBA programming will be harder than it has to be. And uh, yeah, that's what we are going to do today. So let's go over to my PC and uh, look at the settings. Okay, here we are. The first thing I would like to show you is the auto syntax check feature. And uh, then it's something that really drives me crazy. Look at this simple statement. Um, now, if I make a mistake, which might happen, then it will instantly pop up a message box, this one here, um, compile error expected end of statement. Well, it's n nice, but, um, well, no. I don't want to have a message box here that is totally... Um, interrupting with my work and and it's not helpful at all. I like it that the the statement is uh, marked in red so that it is um, had a an compile error that is actually quite good. But I do not want this ugly interrupting message box, and that is something uh, that absolutely has to go away. To turn that off, um, go to the tools options menu and this is uh, the options dialog of the VBA development environment and uh, the first thing I always do wherever I come and uh, work in VBA is just turn auto syntax check off that's totally annoying so um, now I can uh, correct the statement and everything's fine but if I now change something around you see there's no message box anymore if I um, leave that line I still get the red highlighting so um, I still see instantly if there's a compile error in the statement but I do not want to have a message box that's totally insane then that is uh, switched on by default okay the the next thing is um, the option require variable declaration. I check that and actually nothing happens now. Uh, but you, you see this is a module and uh, there's just this option compare database statement at the top. If I now insert a new module you see something very important option explicit. That is something that you should have always turned on. I'll show you what it does. Just have a little procedure here, I call it test. And now I say dim a1 as string and I say message box and it just displays that. Now I save that and uh, say debug compile. And now I get this error message because I made a mistake obviously I declared a string uh, a1 and in the message box I use a2 and a2 is simply not defined that's what the message says and that is extremely helpful now if I delete this option explicit statement on the, at the top here and uh, compile again there's no error anymore and I do it once more. No, I can't. It is already compiled. This is compiled, but this cannot be right because my variable a2 has never been declared anywhere. So this cannot make any sense. And that's what the uh, option explicit statement is for. So it's not that big of a problem if you have not turned it on in the uh, options dialog. You can always go there and just write your option explicit statement manually at the top of the module 
and now if you compile you get this error and you absolutely want this error because it might um, cause you endless debug sessions uh, looking for an error and it's just something like that where you declare a variable a1 and you use a2 something completely different and you don't spot that at the at the first sight and then you need ages to find that error by the way uh, a variable name a1 and a2 is not very good but I'll come to that in uh, my second uh, session of this series so now in um, in another tab here, the general tab, there's edit and continue, notify before state loss. And I'll check this and um, we'll, we'll show what happens. Now, if I run this, um, if I run any code, let's, let's uh, focus on this one here. I have a user-defined property application name. I just hit enter to set the application name and now I call my message box procedure so here's my message box now if I'm working on the code and find an error or am debug so debugging something something then um, I have the ability to change the the code here and I can do quite a few changes. I can declare a new vari variable here. Um, and I can put that here. And nothing happens. But now, um, my, my code has been compiled. Now, if I delete this variable, there's going to be a problem. I just hit delete. And you see, it's not deleted yet. But I get this warning. This action will reset your project. Proceed anyway. And now if I hit OK, then the variable is deleted. And um, of course, I can't use it anymore. So I just uh, changed that back to my message text. But uh, now I run this again. And uh, yeah, show the message box. And do you notice the title is gone? And that is because my project has been reset. And the, the application name um, property that I set to uh, this better VBA demo application uh, string that has been reset and uh, it's lo it has lost its value. So um, that is fairly useful to have this warning um, when, when you change something in the code and that will reset your application. So... It's not an absolute must that you turn it off, as long as you are aware of the fact that some of these changes um, might reset your the state of your application. Um, well, so I leave that to you if you want to turn that off or not. The next thing I want to look at um, now. These were the really, really important settings that I would absolutely recommend to, to do everywhere. Um, just a quick look. The auto list members, auto quick info and auto data tips, that are um, the, the tool tips that help you uh, programming, the drop down list uh, with the members of an object, the uh, quick info, what's a method that you are going to to call expects uh, for parameters and the data tips is during debugging that you can hover over a, a variable and it will show you the the actual value of the variable very very useful I definitely recommend to have all those three checked uh, down here in the window settings drag and drop text editing uh, yeah well that's just allows you to, to move code around by drag and drop. Uh, nothing special. If you like it, leave it enabled. If not, disable it. N no, no worries here. Default to full module view. I'll show that in a minute. And the procedure separator as well. Now you see in the background there's a um, thin line that is 
the, the border of the procedure. If I write another procedure here, then there's another thin line and uh, inserted there, and that is the procedure separator. I think that's quite useful, but uh, if you don't like them, yeah, no matter, turn them off, doesn't matter. Okay, and this is the, the other option, the default to full module view. What you see is actually full module view. The other option is procedure view. Now, I only see my newly written procedure test and nothing else. And I can switch uh, to the other procedure and then I see only this one. Uh, if you're having problems to focus on one uh, procedure you're working on, then that might be helpful. But actually, I have never, never, ever used it. I absolutely like to have a, a module that is in, in full sight. Then I see all the methods and can scroll up and down to see anything that's in there. But that's, in the end, it's up to you. So the editor format is just the the colors and the font types and font sizes. If you're having problems um, with your eyes and have trouble uh, reading the, the code because it's too small and you cannot um, zoom the whole uh, Windows screen to uh, bigger fonts or something, then you might just increase the font size here. Or if you rather like a dark, um, dark screen, dark environment with a light text on dark background, then you could change all that here. But uh, it's just a, a matter of personal preference, nothing functional here. Now, I skip all the, all the settings on the left. That is not uh, particularly interesting. Notify and state lost, that is uh, what we looked at. I have that usually turned off, but leave it as you as you like it. Um, now, error trapping, that is pretty important. Um, in a running application, in, in an application that is running for an end user, you should always enable break on unhandled errors. That is very important because otherwise the whole um, whole execution of the code will stop on any error, whether it's handled or not. But uh, sometimes, if you've got your error handlers everywhere and you're debugging a longer procedure and you want the code to stop to find the error, then it might be useful to set it to break on all errors that it definitely stops if there is any error in your code at all. Now, the, the break in class module, that does not make any sense to me. Why would I only break in a class module and not in another module? That is pretty much, uh, well, I don't know what, what point that it has, but I never use it at all. It's either most of the time break on unhandled errors or for specific debugging operations, just break on all errors. So, and finally, we, we go to the docking um, tab and just to, to show it that is just uh, which windows of the BBA environment can be docked. It's, well, I think it's good the way it is. I've got the project explorer, that is this one on the left here. I've got that docked here, the properties window down there. It's not um, of much interest in VBA anyway. I've got the immediate pane locked down here. That is probably what, what I usually use. Sometimes I've got a watch window. I'll show that uh, in another video. And yeah, that's basically it. The object browser, browser that is quite useful, that is this thingy. You get it if you click here. and. Um, that shows you all the, the objects in all the linked libraries. And that is something I use from time to time. But if I use it, I rather want to have it in the main MDI child window and not docked somewhere. So um, yeah, that that is basically what I use as uh, settings in the VBA environment. So, okay, that was it for today, and um, thank you for watching, and uh, hope you will.
be back for the next part of this series. Thank you.